One of the most pleasant surprises from the 2021 college football season was the rise of Michigan State. The Spartans had had some great years under coach Mark D'Antonio, but after he retired, Mel Tucker was left to lead them into a new era. 2020 was honestly pretty rough. They got blown out pretty bad, they lacked a lot of talent, and some were wondering if Mel Tucker was in over his head. Little did we know, he was a genius. One of the major reasons why Michigan State was so good last year was because of their star running back, Kenneth Walker. He had a great story. He was an underrated two-star recruit from the state of Tennessee who went to Wake Forest, was slept on, and then eventually broke out. He was by no means a national name, but he was solid at Wake Forest, and when he transferred to Michigan State, there was a decent amount of hype for him. But little did anyone know how good he would be last year. Walker ran for 1,636 yards with 18 touchdowns and an average of 6.2 yards per carry. Because of that, he was an All-American. At one point, he looked like a Heisman finalist, and he is now a big-time rookie running back for the Seattle Seahawks. His best game came last year when he had five touchdowns and a win over Michigan, and Walker truly did take over college football for a couple of games, and is probably my favorite Michigan State player over the last few years. But as we go into 2022, they do return their star quarterback Peyton Thorne, their star wide receiver Jaden Reed, they have a ton of transfers, they've recruited well, and they have their coach Mel Tucker back. Except one big question mark is, who's going to be the starting running back? There are a couple of options, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the two guys I'm super excited to watch, and the two guys I think have a chance to replace Walker and carve their own legacy in East Lansing. But before we can talk about those two guys, I first wanna ask you guys to subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be a ton of college football content throughout the season, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on that. If you wanna support the channel, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment as it really helps, and turn on post notifications so you never miss a college football video. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Kenneth Walker's replacement. I first wanna talk about the three players who have a chance to play, but I don't think are gonna have a huge impact. First one is Elijah Collins. He was actually the Spartans starting running back back in 2019, where he ran for 988 yards and five touchdowns. He was obviously good, but he has been pushed to the back of the depth chart, and he is a redshirt senior, so Tucker's probably going to look to play a younger player. After that, you have Jordan Simmons, who figures to be a rotational piece, and then you have former four-star running back Harold Joyner. Obviously, he was a big-time recruit coming out of high school, and when he arrived at Auburn, he had decent expectations. Unfortunately, he got buried on the depth chart there, and transferred up to Michigan State in hopes of playing. His goal was to become exactly what Kenneth Walker did, but unfortunately for Joyner, he was buried on the depth chart, and I think he's going to be the third back in the room this year because the other two guys just have so much more potential or production to their name. So who are they? Well, they are both transfers. One is a transfer from Colorado, the other is a transfer from Wisconsin. Let's first start from the transfer from Wisconsin, Jalen Berger. If you follow college football recruiting, you probably know who he is. Berger was the number 15 running back in the class of 2020, was a four-star player, and the 136th best recruit overall. He went to Don Bosco Prep. Berger was a high school phenom and was expected to do huge things at Wisconsin. He would arrive in Madison with huge shoes to fill. Jonathan Taylor had just left for the NFL, and many penciled in Berger to be that guy. While he wasn't amazing in 2020, he did show flash. He ended up running the ball 60 times for 301 yards and two touchdowns, while at times showcasing his highlight level abilities. Expectations were through the roof for him in 2021, but he'd now have some competition. The Badgers brought in Ches Malusi from Clemson, and Malusi ended up winning the starting job. This definitely annoyed Berger, as based on my research, it did not seem he reacted well to losing carries to Malusi. I do remember his name being talked about a lot with off the field issues as well, but I'm not gonna speculate on that because I don't know what happened. This ultimately led to him leaving the team and entering the transfer portal. This is the classic case of a guy with a lot of talent, but maybe needed to be coached a little bit harder and needed a new change in scenery. That is exactly what Mel Tucker is going to provide. Tucker is all about giving players second chances, so Berger happily accepted the opportunity to come play for Michigan State. He probably knew he was gonna have a chance to start, he'd have some fresh scenery, and with what Kenneth Walker just did, he probably couldn't help but notice the potential he'd have there. Berger will come into the Michigan State running back room as in my opinion, the number two guy, but he has so much potential. Back in the spring, his name was talked about a lot, this would continue on throughout the spring, and based on what I've read, Berger is in a good position to get a ton of carries. In most cases, I would say he'd be the starter, but I'm just a little bit higher on their other guy that they brought in, and his name is Jarek Broussard, and he comes from Colorado. 
First and foremost, one of the major reasons why I think Broussard will be better is because he was named to the Doak Walker Award watch list while Berger was not. I've also seen a lot of articles hyping him up, and it is for good reason. Coming out of Bishop Lynch High School in Dallas, Texas, Broussard was an under-the-radar recruit. He was the number 88 athlete in the 1,143rd best player in the class of 2018. Broussard was one of those players that went under the radar, probably because he was a little bit undersized. Except that didn't matter, as he'd eventually put it all together at Colorado. He'd finally start playing in 2020, and he ran the ball 156 times for 895 yards and 5 touchdowns, while averaging 5.7 yards per carry. He wasn't that much of a threat coming out of the backfield to catch passes, but he also wasn't non-existent either. He was so good in 2020 that he was actually named the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. You probably don't remember that, because the Pac-12 had a very short season, and Colorado is not this national name. Yeah, the Buffaloes did have a breakout season in their first year under head coach Carl Durrell, but last year they were not very good, so everyone forgot about them. Why didn't Broussard play his first two years in Boulder? Well, it's because he tore his ACL two straight times. That is something that head coach Mel Tucker is more than familiar with, as if you remember right, Mel Tucker was at Colorado in 2019, so he knows Broussard very well. That's probably why it was a no-brainer for Jarek to jump from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, just like Tucker did in 2020. Broussard is not only familiar with the coach, but he has production to his name, was the conference player of the year, and he probably also saw a chance to start and what Walker did, so to him it was probably a ball and glove like fit. Broussard has played very well throughout spring and summer camp, and Mel Tucker had this to say about him, quote, he's an explosive player, he's an explosive athlete. You can see kind of the way he is built. He runs with power, and he's got quickness, and he's got speed. He's got burst through traffic, he's got really good awareness and instincts, and he's a credible receiver out of the backfield. He's just in general a football player. He loves to play football. Overall, I think Broussard will be running back one, and Berger will be running back two, but both of them could have breakout seasons. Michigan State had a lot of success running the ball last year, so I see no reason why they're going to shy away from that. Now that they have two capable runners instead of just one, this could make the offense even better. And then with Jaden Reed returning, and the addition of Daniel Barker at tight end, this Michigan State offense could actually be better and more balanced than last year's. I was always worried about how they would do if Walker went down with an injury, but this year, the offense seems so much more balanced, and I'm not as concerned. I don't think Michigan State is going to catch people by surprise anymore, and they're definitely going to have a target on their back a little bit more, so I'm not sure how they are going to do this year, but overall, I'm really excited to see what happens at the running back spot. Mel Tucker has utilized the transfer portal very well, and if he can hit gold two straight years, then we're going to see a lot of guys who are going to want to transfer to East Lansing after this season. But what do you guys think? If you're a Michigan State fan, what do you think of the running back room? Who will win the job between Broussard and Berger? And what is another topic in college football I should cover in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what you think of Michigan State in 2022. And before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.